Welcome back. We are exploring this strange alien ship and so far have not found anyone who can help us with stopping it from landing on top of a city. I guess we need to be looking for this phase that the the one guy told us about. Haven't found them yet though. And there's also Klingons wandering around, so that's fun. Let's keep heading left. Okay, looks like some kind of uh, greenery. We oh. are just here to look around, Captain. I'm sure you don't mind. Would it matter if we did? Your doctor's discourtesy, though indirect, does no credit to your party, Captain Kirk. I would have expected better when we have done nothing to warrant rudeness. We need not interfere with one another's activities, I think. He's kind of right. McCoy's being rude. The room is filled with the rich scent of growing things. There is much lush growth and some which is not thriving as well. A gardener's work table is against one wall. Yeah, most of these plants seem to be doing okay. These plants look green and healthy with strong stems and shiny leaves. These on the other hand. These plants look brown, pinched and wilted, although their root systems are as well developed as those in the other hydro bins. Attached is a sealed metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. A trace of greenish mold rims the connection joint. That may be the reason for this uh, plant's malady. Wait, didn't uh, the woman just ta tell us about something dying and her being unable to provide fruit? Maybe this is what she was talking about. A large countertop well suited as a workbench with what appears to be mechanized assists and a hookup close at hand. A small data terminal seems to be part of the design. All right. The room is filled with the rich a Klingon officer whose direct and intense expression never wavers. A Klingon crewman wearing a look of disdain and distrust. Captain Kirk, leader, finds this room particularly green. Very astute. The Vulcan raises an eyebrow when he catches McCoy grinning at him, but atypically holding his tongue. Bones eyes the Vulcan and wonders if, along with green blood, he might have a green thumb. Perhaps. Lieutenant Uhura seems to find this garden a pleasant place. I mean, it's still kind of uh, Spartan looking, but it is, I guess, the greenest place we've seen in the ship, at least. wonder if this is supposed to grow all over the ceiling like the that. The ceiling supports a complex network of pipes with vines growing between them. No indication of whether or not that's how it's supposed to be, or if it's just overgrown from lack of proper maintenance. This reminds me of the Arboretum on Calliope 3, except the equipment didn't look this advanced. A hydroponics room, Captain. The console against the wall appears to be a workbench. This might be a nice little garden if they added some rustic wooden benches and a little fountain, I guess. <laughs> okay, this might be a nice rustic garden if they turn it into a nice rustic garden. A shame there aren't any flowers, Captain, but the lushness of the greenery is still very pleasant. My aide and I are merely observing both you and conditions on this ship. Should I have an observation to share with you, I will certainly not hesitate to do so. I don't doubt it. Why would I want to chit-chat you, you treacherous Federation snake? I think I like the commander better. Let's take a look at these plants. I'm a doctor, not a country boy from Iowa. A little recalibration. Not like these are people, after all. These plants are dying, Jim, no doubt about it. Basically, they're starving to death for lack of active organic compounds. Fertilizer, basically. I'd say most important a certain 
soluble phosphorus, nitrogen, ammonia, and calcium compounds. Wait, isn't that what the blocks were made of? That keg is steel and alloy, but inside is something unusual. That greenish mold around the lip appears to be a wild growth. Can't compete against more complex plant life in an open ecosystem. But in isolation with a nutrient-rich broth, which I take it the keg contains, it does very well indeed. Of course, it seems to have completely blocked the feeder tube, which probably accounts for why the plants are struggling to survive in this hydro bin. Indeed. And again, it doesn't quite match the text. It happens a lot with McCoy's uh, dialogue in this particular mission. Various plants grown in a specialized, nutrient-rich medium. A chlorophyll-based plant species. Minor evidence of opportunistic disease incursion. But that appears to be secondary to reduction in overall plant vigor. I think that basically means the plant isn't sick, but it is being blocked from getting its nutrients by the moss in the feeder tube. This 40 liter capacity metal keg is constructed of steel with non-reactive alloy lining. The round opening for the feeder attachment is just under 10 centimeters in diameter. Inside is an uncomplicated life form, and it appears to fill the interior of the keg. Alright, well if we want to get this plant back into uh, good health, which we may want to do to help that woman, we probably need to do something about that. The feeder hose comes free and a mechanism pulls it out of the way. But a terrible stench rises out of the container, smelling like many things died in there long ago. Yeah. A round metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. Alright, let's see if we can use this table to work on it. The nutrient broth in this container has become contaminated. It should be disinfected before the container can be reused. I wonder... How do we disinfect that? Well, this is one of the situations where actually your phasers are the right answer. And we want to use the uh, maximum power setting. The container heats up rapidly and foul-smelling smoke pours out of the small opening on the top. This container must be refilled with nutrient broth before it is replaced for use. hoses roll out on wired mechanisms and insert into the container. From one flows a clear liquid nearly filling the container. The other hose just makes burping noises. Okay, so looks like we may have gotten water but not actual nutrients. A round metal keg with a feeder hose attachment on top. No life form registration, Captain. The keg has only inert chemicals inside, none of which would sustain life, at least not in their present form. Yeah, looks like we need to add uh, the nutrients, which this table seems to no longer have in supply. However, those blocks were made of the right components, weren't they? Based on what McCoy said. So we need to find a way to get those. Unfortunately, Jakes, he didn't seem likely to want to part with them unless we can get him something in exchange. It is filled with a dense but nutrient-poor liquid medium. This is a typical means of root support and nutrient delivery for hydroponically grown plants.
Okay, nothing else we can do here for now. Um, let's head to through this door where the Klingons came from. Okay. Captain, we have just been thoroughly and efficiently scanned. Please identify yourself. You haven't been in to see me before, have you? I'm Captain James T. Kirk, commanding the USS Enterprise. These others are my crew. Science Officer Spock, Lieutenant Uhura, and Dr. McCoy. Who are you? We are the Phase. Do not your parents speak of me? Captain, note that it identifies itself only erratically in the singular eye, and a blend of voices typifies its communication. Are you suggesting it is a hive mind, Mr. Spock? Or is the voice synthesizer simply programmed for a harmonic chord of voices? Inconclusive. It may also be that an array of otherwise independent machines have been linked to provide the requisite computing power, although that is an antique and unsophisticated method of achieving this level of intelligence at odds with the overall level of sophistication and evidence. I suggest we pay close attention to both its actions and its words. Phase, why would our parents have spoken of you? I am here to care for all of you, Kirk. It is easier for me to care for you when you are younger, but sometimes one's parents are forgetful. We understand. I will care for you now. You will feel better after you eat. Great. A food-fixating, mothering computer. It could, in fact, be very much that. Faze, you're about to land on a planet inhabited by sentience in the middle of a settlement. If you are in control of this vessel, you must stop. You must not land there. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now. I'm very busy. Okay, I think we found the source of uh, what is medicating all these people. Although it seems to be a computer, so... It doesn't really tell us anything, and it doesn't really seem to be willing to talk to us about anything else. Which is also not very helpful, since this is the closest thing to something in charge we've found thus far. The room's most captivating feature is a strange column of lights in the middle of the room. However, it's evident that people unknown came through and severely damaged everything they could. Evidently, they didn't hesitate to hurt one of their own people, either. Yes, the woman in the corner here looks like she might be hurt. The guts of this machinery have been torn from the wall, leaving broken plastic and bent metal dangling. It doesn't look like it will ever work again. Hopefully we won't need it then. Fragments of what looks like glass glitter sharply, reflecting iridescent gleams like oil floating on water. Some fragments are larger and some smaller, but it is impossible to tell what the glassy objects originally looked like. Evidently, someone deliberately smashed them, intending total destruction. Okay. That's not very helpful. Also, somebody graffitied the back wall here, by the looks of it. A column of iridescent sparkles and shimmers, punctuated by floating bubbles of colored light, dances around and within a barely visible central support frame. Gazing at it relaxes you and brings a mild but pleasant sense of peace and calm. Weird, almost the hypnotic effect, I guess. A female of middle age is seated against one wall. Her arms lie limply by her sides and her legs are outstretched, giving her the aspect of a discarded rag doll. She is completely motionless as she stares into middle distance, focused on nothing. Okay. Probably want to have McCoy take a look at her. Captain Kirk is angered by the destruction evident in this room, and determined to get to the bottom of it. The science officer seems quite fascinated with the column of lights in the middle of the room. Dr. McCoy feels sharp concern for the well-being of the collapsed woman. Lieutenant Uhura seems particularly dismayed by the damage done to the device built into the wall. This computer is psychologically unstable. I wonder if illogic... Captain, this computer shows no attention to logical principles. Therefore, I must conclude that demonstrations of illogic would have little impact upon it. So we can't talk it to death, 
too bad, because that's definitely one of Kirk's strengths. I find the room fascinating, Captain. Worthy of close examination in every regard. I would suggest that Dr. McCoy examine the woman lying on the floor. That woman appears to need medical attention. Someone seems to have been quite indiscriminate about damaging everything they could reach in here. Indeed. Let's see what we can scan. An extremely complex mechanical construct, Captain. Readings indicate this is a functional AI, an artificial intelligence of considerable sophistication. It may not be in perfect condition, however. Certain power shunts may be repair solutions to malfunctioning subsets. It sounds like you're saying there's scar tissue where the machine healed old damage. Precisely, Doctor. Interesting. It may not have been able to completely repair itself based on how it's behaving, although we don't actually know if this is how it's supposed to be behaving, so... This machinery appears to have been a read-only computer terminal. The configuration and construction is unique, to say the least, from what I can make out. It is utterly destroyed, beyond any hope of repair. Tight lattice carbon forms the basic substrate to this material. Industrial grade diamond, Captain. It has evidently been created under some highly unusual conditions to produce micro-thin interlayered sheets to strengthen the medium, which would otherwise be impossible even to handle without breaking. Captain, given what I've read about computer media research being conducted at the Malafid Institute on Karabidi 3, I believe these glass shards represent another culture's pursuit of a molecularly encodable data system. The Malafid researchers have not yet solved the difficulty of strengthening the excessively fragile records without impairing the usefulness of the medium. But these people seem to have done so. They didn't solve it completely. Unless you can think these chips and powder are what they came up with. Glass is usable, but it becomes friable under stress. I think somebody took a hammer to these, Captain. Okay, somebody really wanted to destroy that. Too bad if they were data storage devices. They may have contained some useful information. It definitely seems like all of this stuff was built by these people's ancestors and something went wrong after that. Because people we've met so far do not have the intelligence to build anything like this ship, from what we've seen. The person is typical of her race, but seems to be functioning below optimal levels. That's one way of putting it. McCoy's strike order may be of more use. She's cataleptic, Jim. Completely submerged within her mind. Completely withdrawn external stimuli. If I were to put her arm up in the air, it would stay there until I moved it back down. Psychological damage or something physical? I can't be sure, even with rather extensive tests, but from the tricorder readings, I would say some psychological shock ruptured an inherently fragile cognitive structure. In ancient times, they would have said she was skittish or prone to a nervous breakdown or weak-minded. There are a myriad of childhood developmental blind alleys that might restrict her adult pattern creation representation cap. <laughs> Bone stop. You're starting to sound like Spock. You do not have to be insulting, Captain. Okay, and here they seem to have just used the failed take where um, the Forest Kelly messed up the last part of the line, <laughs> but kept it in the game anyway. Gives me the impression, since this is only happening to McCoy, to this degree in this mission, that these, that they were in a rush to record his lines for some reason. I don't really know. This is not a life form, Captain, but it does register with biomagnetics and considerable electrical complexity. If this is not a functioning, artificially intelligent construct, I'll eat my hat. You don't have a hat. Also, I'm very tempted, based on what McCoy said, to try and pose her in a, like, a funny pose. But that wouldn't be very professional, now would it? Um, 
Can we help her? I'm sorry, Jim, but I'm not willing to experiment with the drugs I'm carrying to see what might or might not work, especially given her condition. I'm afraid I'd, I'd be as likely to kill her as affect any positive change. That is kind of annoying, because I would like to be able to get information from her, and I don't think we can talk to her in this state. There is no response at all. Not even a flicker of attention crosses the person's eyes. But there is another way we could um, communicate with her. Spock is telepathic, after all. Are you suggesting I attempt a Vulcan mind meld, Captain? It does seem an appropriate effort in this circumstance. It will take me a moment to prepare myself. Doctor, please monitor her life signs. The procedure does entail some risk. Not only to her, but to you too. Am I right? I assure you, Doctor, I will retain sufficient distance to avoid being dragged into something from which I cannot withdraw. Go ahead now, Spock. I am... Puzzle Wit. I am the one who reads it all. I do not understand. I try. I read it all. So many ideas. Always jumbled, though. Can, cannot make sense of it. Puzzlewit wants to know. Hope to discover why she. she why? I cannot, I try to remember it all. Then Tuscan comes in. He destroys, destroys me. My hopes all broken, all shattered. Ow. pieces. Doctor? No physical injuries, Captain. Not to him or to her. Tuskins. Uh, scared of me. Scared. For no reason. He thinks I know. I know, but I don't know. I don't understand. Nothing connects to anything else. I want to know it all. Hope then I'll understand. He thinks I'll hurt him. I don't hurt anybody. I just want to know more. Now I only know what I know. Never know what to Puzzle Witch doesn't know anymore. What's going on here, Cock? We are trying to help this woman, Captain Clark. Be quiet, or you'll put her and my science officer both at considerable risk. He's trying to make a mental slave of the alien, Captain. She could tell him the secrets of this ship, of its transit through the Klingon Empire. Stop him! We'll listen in a moment. I wouldn't have a representative of the Federation damaged or rendering assistance. Puzzle Witch remembers. Everything she reads. Subject. Screen laminates. Reflective. Subject to autotrophic bonding with molybdenized nitrous oxides. In the presence of cyanodephosphotrihydrous gases. Subject. Wiring systems. Auxiliary to cryptolog. Does Puzzle Witch remember this ship passing through Klingon space, perhaps? All the paralenses were copied prior to liftoff. No new encryption was permitted. We could only read, not write to them. That stellar rejector, Captain. Why would a computer terminal permit read-only interface, I ask you? The builders didn't trust us. Didn't think we would be capable. Now, the 
the reader is damaged. It's broken like puzzle wit. Like us all. Like Tuscan. The parallels can't be replaced. The reader can't be fixed. Puzzle wit can't be fixed. Nothing to read now. Nothing new to learn, to remember. Stupid. Like Tuscan now. This whole thing is stupid, if you ask me. Anything but stupid, in fact. Captain Kirk, the library this woman read has been recorded entirely in her mind, although she lacks the ability to understand it or even to recall it in an orderly manner. She believed if she could fill up her mind, acquire enough knowledge, understanding would come. Now her personality is withdrawing, refusing to accept the loss of everything she has not yet been able to read. She pinned all her hopes on this, and without it, she may lose the will to live. Do you know everything she knows now? No, Captain Clark, I do not. This race has very unusual mind patterns, and I am fortunate she was in as passive a state as she is mentally. It is very likely I would have been hurt were she less withdrawn to begin with. Moreover, the knowledge she does possess is a very peculiar admixture, reflecting this society's uneven level of advancement. Archaisms and startling breakthroughs coexist. So there is much to be learned from this woman from this ship. Knowledge the Federation would gladly share with friends, Captain Clark. Let nothing happen to this alien woman, Captain. If she should die, I would take it as an indication that you would sooner let her perish than share her special knowledge with the Klingon Empire. Captain Clark, if I took her aboard the Enterprise, I might be able to help her. I would have expected such treachery from the likes of you. You'll start an interstellar incident like this. I thought some of the folks on board this ship were paranoid. Gentlemen, gentlemen. Captain Clark, we don't want this woman to die any more than you do. Not because we want to milk her brain dry, but because she's an important being in her own right. Just as important to the universe as, well, as your companion here. Maybe more so. <sighs> Dr. McCoy will do what he can. That's all that can be expected. That's all I would expect. Goodbye for now, Captain. Expect to see us again. Okay, well, that was somewhat uh, educational. It looks like this computer here was a read-only database of information left here by whoever constructed this ship. Which is interesting because it seemed that they didn't trust the people on the ship. So maybe their deteriorating state is not just from the long journey. Too bad we can't find anything else out from her. Maybe if we talk to um, the Phase, they will uh, be able to tell us more if they can take their mind off of food for a second. Hello there, Kirk. Welcome, all of you. You're not feeling well, are you? I'm feeling fine. Let's drop the subject. I don't think uh, it will. I want some information from you, Phase. Why? How are you feeling? Aren't you feeling well? I don't think that's gonna work. I'm feeling fine. Let's... I want some information from you, FaZe. You feel that information will be helpful to you? Then of course I want to help. What would you like information about? The most important thing is for me to find out how to stop you from landing on the colony on Atabus. What are you? What are you doing here? Tell me about your history, and I'm sure that will be helpful. Taking the direct approach didn't really seem to work, so maybe this is a better option. The most important, what are you? Let's go what with this. The builders installed the Parallels Library to help with questions such as yours. But I'm afraid Tuscan came in when he wasn't feeling well. He seems to have damaged the library. We are attempting to repair it. This ship, the Compassion, was created by the builders to carry the folk like you. The damaged ones. Asleep. We were the very best intelligence the Builders could install. Although now that a few generations have passed, 
I'm certain I will find ourselves an ancient relic. The entire purpose was that, in a time, the builders would find cures, solutions to the kinds of difficulties you and the others here experience. After we land, they will make you feel good. Better even than when you've eaten well and are happy. A sleeper ship, Captain. The builders loaded up all the undesirables and shipped them off planet. So why is everyone here awake? Not undesirable! No, Dr. McCoy, you are beloved of the Builders and of us! Why else would I be programmed to keep you safe, wake you before landing, and we all return to Shamrum to be welcomed by your great-grandchildren? Captain, if I may, two questions, phase. How long ago did you wake us up? And how much time has passed since this ship was launched by the Builders? You were awakened shortly before we were to land. We were launched 99 eons ago. Can you translate that into the half-life of some radioactive isotope for me? Half the isotope of Silicon 32 has decayed away since our voyage together began. Captain, the phase is saying it has only been in space approximately 280 Earth years. Atabis does have ruins, the most recent of which are in excess of a thousand years old, but no sentient life. Otherwise, it would have been unsuitable for Federation colonization. Moreover, the readings I took while still aboard the Enterprise indicated this ship had probably been in space more like 1,600 years. Can you translate that into the half-life of some radioactive isotope for us, Mr. Spock? By my instrumentation, radium-226 has half decayed into radon-222 in the time you have been in space. Phase. You are mistaken. What instruments could you have possibly been using without my knowledge, Mr. Spock? The external monitors are inaccessible to the folk on board, as you well know. It would hardly do for someone as confused as you clearly are to get into sensitive areas. I suggest you go get something to eat. You are clearly not thinking, nor feeling well. Faze, is it possible you're not thinking or not feeling well? Okay, so the ship was used to basically send people with, I guess, mental issues, maybe other diseases as well, away until they could find a cure for their problems. Why they didn't just put them in, like, some kind of cryogenic chamber on their own world is a, something I don't know the answer to. But it seems this ship has taken much longer than was originally planned to get back. And the civilization they were returning to is no longer there. Also, it seems that these people were woken up uh, quite a while ago before they were supposed to land. And things have only gotten worse since then, and I'm sure the medication isn't helping either. FaZe, are you aware that we are not even from there? That we are from another ship, a different planet altogether? That Mr. Spock here isn't even the same race as the other three of us? Doesn't look like the FaZe is aware of any of that. FaZe, FaZe, are you Let's aware ask that about. we are not even from Is there something more you'd like to talk about? Or do you want to get some rest? Wouldn't you like to be better rested and feeling better? No, I don't think that. I just as soon stop talking about it. Faze, scan me. Scan the others here with me. Scan the people elsewhere on the ship. Are we even the same race? No, I don't. Faze, scan me. Scan All the right, others let's here. let's try it. You aren't well, that's true. Recognizing that you're not well is the first step toward getting the help you need, Captain Kirk. I will help you if you like, although first you should get some food and some rest. Do you think you'd like that? No, I don't think that. I just as soon stop talking about it. You will feel better after you eat, dear. Run along now, I'm very busy. You can come back to talk to us again another time. Okay, well, this uh, AI is not any help. 
all it wants to do is get us to eat drugged food and take rest. We also can't get any information from uh, the databanks because some person named Tuscan apparently destroyed everything. I don't know who this Tuscan is, but I already don't like him. Uh, what's through here? Wait, what? We went left a few times and then straight up twice. And we're back here. <laughs> that makes no sense. Unless there were corridors that we didn't see that were curved somehow. Okay, well... I don't really understand what's going on here. And the phase is definitely not any help. So we'll have to figure out what else we can do in the next video.